Hey everyone, Bill here. Uh, today I am going to be doing a review video on the Festool track saw. This is the TS75 model. Um, there's a couple reasons why I went with this size over the TS55. Uh, so it's this is obviously a bigger model. Um, the main reason why I went ahead and went with this was the depth of cut capacity. This, I believe, is two and three quarter inch uh, straight cut, and the TS55, if I'm not mistaken, is two and an eighth inch. Um, I do plan on doing some river tables that I will need to rip down the middle, uh, and I you know, want to do them kind of thick, maybe two, two and a half inch, something like that. And so to ensure that I would be able to cut that kind of uh, thickness of wood, I just went ahead, spent the extra $70 price difference uh, between the two models and went with the TS-75. Now I got the plus model, which came with the 75 inch track. Um, and I went with, I would rather have a longer track to make long cuts like that to start off with than to have too short of a track and then have to line it up multiple times and try to stay perfect. Uh, to get a nice, straight, perfect cut. Uh, the good thing is, is you know, even if I did get a shorter track and I wanted to make it longer, I could buy a longer track and they have connectors that go underneath um, the tracks to connect them and make one super long track. But for now, I just went with this. Um, so this is the, the saw here. I have a standard, you know, uh, quarter cable saw that I bought at the store just to kind of show a comparison and the difference in size okay as far as weight this is heavier but it's not significantly heavier um, you know obviously if I held them for a while then it would become heavier uh, due to getting tired and everything but anyway I just kind of want to show you a, a size comparison there uh, so you can see just kind of how it looks now um, I was kind of anti-festool for a little while because of their pricing it's i mean they are they're expensive however you notice the price when it comes to the quality because the tool is very well designed very well built um i wish i would have got one a long time ago um this thing makes accurate cuts the mess that it leaves behind as far as the sawdust if you as long as you have a vacuum hooked up to it it is minimal uh, very minimal compared to using the standard um you know saw even with the you know the craig accucut and the the universal base you'll still have quite a bit of mess to clean up afterwards i do not have a festool vacuum i actually have a little um let me grab it here just to kind of show you but it's just a little small uh, what is this? One point, no, I'm sorry, two and a half gallon, um, Craftsman shop back. Okay. It's probably not a great show of it, but that's all right. You get the idea though. And with that, I hook it up to my festool and I'm able to do so because I have, um, this hose kit from Rockler that I got a while back. It's pretty nice because it comes with these att attachments, these different attachments that come with this hose, which goes up to 12 feet, okay? And these, with this little kit here, I can hook it directly up to the saw, and it works pretty dang good. So, uh, the, the cleanup is very minimal compared to using a standard circular saw. I do not have any sponsorships or partnerships or anything with any of these companies with Festool, you know, Quarter Cable or, or uh, Rockler, none of that. Um, these are all things that I bought on my own, uh, so this is completely non-biased opinion. Uh, Alright, so with the saw, it's pretty neat, okay, you've got the track guide here. Now, whenever you stick it on... There is no play in it. Um, of course, you have to adjust it to that, right? So coming out of the box, when you first get it, you'll have some slop like that. How you adjust it Okay. How you adjust it? See this little green knob, this little green knob here? You tighten that pretty much until it, it stops for the most part. All right, so 
no wiggle room there, but on this one you can see it still moves, right? So just tighten that. And you don't have to do it super tight. Once it stops, that's pretty much it, okay? And then you wanna make sure that your saw still slides freely, which it does, okay? One cool feature that I've, I saw on this that uh, I've never seen on a saw before, uh, a circular saw anyway, is you can actually adjust the speed right here. If you wanna slow your blade down, you can turn it down. If you wanna speed it up, you can speed it up, okay? Also, most circular saws, um, this the trigger, you can, you can pull it right away. This has a built-in safety that you have to push up here and then you can start the saw, okay? Uh, another thing that I actually really liked a lot, and I don't know, maybe it's stupid, but to me, I thought it was pretty awesome. You notice there's no power cord on here. Um, what's nice about that is you're not wrapping it around the tool multiple times over you know a long period of time and then possibly ruining your power source. You can disconnect it for storage and keep it in good condition so you never have any problems with your power connection okay all you got to do to connect it okay it's only going to go in one way so it's almost impossible to mess it up so you just stick it in push it all the way in and then you turn it until it locks okay right there it's locked boom done all right so i thought that was a really really neat feature um changing the blade your tool is stored on the base here, which is really nice. So you don't have to worry about losing it or, you know, spending half an hour looking for that one specific Allen key. Um, and then to change the blade, what's really cool on this saw is they made it super easy to do. Right here, it says fast fix. Okay, you gotta make sure, oh, so before I get to that, this is the depth stop, okay? Um, you can set your depth to whatever thickness you're cutting, you know, of course, add a, so if I'm cutting a half inch uh, or one and a half inch thick piece, I can just go to the next notch down or two notches down to ensure, um, that I'm going to make it cut all the way through. And then when you plunge it, that might help if I get it off the wood, when you plunge it, boom, stops, you get that same depth of cut every single time. Okay, and if you don't push this, you can't push it down. And again, you can't pull the trigger. You have to push to do both, all right? Now, for the blade change, which is really nice, you pull up on this right here, okay? And then you just push it down until it locks. And actually, you gotta make sure this is all the way down to ensure that it's gonna lock. And then locks in place. Not only does it lock the blade here so you can access the arbor to change it, but it also locks the blade itself from spinning. There's no need to hold a lock button like on most circular saws. So that's really nice. Um, it's gonna make it super easy to change the blade. You also have a riving knife here uh, to help prevent any possible kickback whenever, you know, the, if the wood tries to pinch back on it. So that's gonna be great for cutting slabs um, or any kind of wood that's got uh, you know, tension in it. So, and then you just push that uh, back in. So let me, I'll do that again here. Okay, it's locked. I just push down a little bit and then it releases. Super easy. Blade, new blades on, da da da, whatever. All right. This right here is a built in kind of like a, stop block so to speak and what it does is it hooks onto the back here to prevent it from lifting up so if you're doing let's say you're not starting at the edge you're starting from the middle and making a cut you put this on the track and uh, well anyway put it on the track and it basically grabs right here and it keeps it from lifting up when you're doing the plunge cut and then you can, you know, go on. And then you can set it at a certain point so you can make that same exact cut every time. Um, you can also tilt it 47 degrees or ne to negative one. Uh, so if you wanna do some mitered cuts, that's really nice. 
Uh, you know, you got two locks here to ensure that it stays nice and stable. And a 45 degree, it'll do two and one eighth inch thick cut at 45 degrees, I believe is what uh, I saw in one of the Festool videos. So anyway, that is pretty much all I can think of to cover as far as, you know, what's on the saw and the features of it and everything. I am going to cut the video for a minute. I'm going to get set up and I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a cut without the vacuum so you can see the mess that it's going to leave behind. And then I will do a cut with the vacuum uh, so you can see a difference in just how how much cleaner it is. I mean, there's still going to be some sawdust. There always will be, but it, it's significantly less. This tabletop here is MDF, and I was doing a little practice cut, and I cut the, the edge right there to cut it straight because it wasn't straight. And I, I didn't hook up the vacuum, and there was dust everywhere. It was insane. It was super messy. Uh, then I hooked up the vacuum. Yes, there was still some dust, but nowhere near as much. So... Uh, I'm going to cut the video off here and then I will come back on to show you uh, the difference between without a vacuum and with the vacuum. So I'll be back in a few. Got my safety glasses, got my earplugs, safety first, okay? Always make sure you use proper safety equipment. All right, so just to kind of show you real quick what I was talking about earlier on the, the variable speed. Okay, I'm going to kick it on uh, on low and then I'll, I'll speed it up so you can kind of hear the, the difference in the RPMs here. Okay? So I got to push this first and then I squeeze the trigger. Okay. So you can hear I was speeding it up, which is pretty nice. Now you'll notice that kind of grinding noise or like kind of that rough sound to it. That's actually the technology that Festool uses in the motor. And what that does is it's, um, it adjusts the speed a little bit to prevent any burning on the sides when you make a cut. I have not seen any burn marks yet while using this saw, so that's, that's a really nice feature because it can be a pain to try to sand those burn marks off, um, you know, if you need to, to not have that on there. So this little, uh, there's a little guard right here, it's a splinter guard, that prevents any splintering when you make the cut. But anyway, I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna show you just how messy it is when I make this cut, and then you know we'll do the vacuum with the vacuum afterwards. So here we go. All right, so you can see, you know, we got some dust here, some mess. Uh, and being a woodworker, sawdust, you, as much as you love it, you also hate it equally as much because it just gets everywhere. It's a pain to clean uh, and to try to maintain cleanliness with it. So, uh, all right, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video off here. When we come back, I will have the vacuum hooked up and we'll do another cut so you can see how much cleaner it is. All right, so just to show you. Here's my Rockler hose kit I've got connected to my shop vac, okay? This thing literally is a perfect fit, goes right on here. Boom, there it is, all right? So, now I'm gonna kick on my vacuum, make the cut, and you'll see how much cleaner it is and how much less sawdust there is. So, here we go. Remember, safety equipment. <laughs> Still gonna have a little bit of dust okay it's a little bit here but it is nowhere near as messy as the cut that i made earlier um okay got a nice straight cut look at that no burn marks whatsoever we also so i cut against the grain no i'm sorry i cut with the grain on this one the last one i cut against the grain and you can see i mean it's it's clean there's no chipping there's no splintering that's what this splinter guard on here is is it prevents that. Now, 
the Craig AccuCut that I had, um, you know, it did great. Okay, this is what I have right here. It did great for the most part, but what the issue I had with it um, was the the universal base. Okay, there's there's a couple screws on there that attaches to a standard circular saw, and I had a problem with those becoming loose and. It, I kept having to readjust, kept having to readjust, and kept having to cut a little more of my, my splinter guard here uh, to where there's almost nothing left on this side. Now I can swap it and, and start using this side, but it doesn't change the fact that those screws would kind of become loose here and there. Um, and it, it was actually messing up my cuts and costing me money because now I have to go get another piece of wood because that cut was inaccurate and didn't work for what I needed it to do. I'm sure, you know, if I put a little Loctite on those screws, it wouldn't be an issue, but um, I just got so frustrated and costing myself money and, and messing up my cuts that I was like, screw it. I'm gonna spend the extra money, get something, hopefully will be my last purchase as far as track saws go. So, um, that is pretty much it for what I have. This is, you know, the review, my review. I love this thing, love everything about it, except one thing, which of course is the price. I paid after tax and shipping and everything, $904 for this. So almost $1,000 for this specific model. Again, I got the Plus, which came with the 75 inch track. I believe this saw by itself with no track is um, $699 before tax and shipping and all of that. So um, as far as being able to buy it, I know at the current time that I'm recording this video, it is pretty much sold out everywhere. Festool directly, if you were to buy it from them, it's on back order by a few weeks, I believe. Rockler didn't have it. Woodcraft didn't have it. I got this one from Acme Tools uh, website. And then I went back, I think last week or the week before that, sold out. So I got super lucky with this um, by being able to get it in stock. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys liked the video. Hope you got some useful information out of it. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.